Hello my friends, it's Lisa and I'm going to be going over my five star predictions from last year and seeing if I was right. So I had 10 books in total, five books that were backlisted titles and five that were new releases in 2021 that I predicted were going to be five stars. And I was definitely wrong about some of them. So yeah, there's not much to say. Let's just get right into it. So I'm going to go in the same order that I did in my five star predictions video. I started with the five backlisted titles. And the first one I thought was going to be five stars was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This one I was very close to giving five stars. This was a four and a half stars, so it was nearly there. I was nearly correct. <laughs> and I feel like I don't really need to explain what this is about, and there's not much of like a distinct plot. You're basically just following the four March sisters through their lives and seeing their different relationships with their family and their friends and... That's it. <laughs> but I ended up giving this four and a half stars, so I did really enjoy it. I thought for a classic this was very easy to read, and the reason I say that is I just don't read a lot of classics, like ever, and I have always found certain classics to be very confusing to read, but this one was very easy to understand. I didn't find that I was confused at all or needing to look up what was actually happening like I have before with some other classics that I've read, so it was very easy to read. I think if you're kind of starting to get into classics or you haven't read a lot like me, this would be a good one to start with. I think the reason I couldn't give this a full five stars though was because of how long it took me to read it, which obviously is my own fault, but it took me like two months I think to read this book and I think it helped in a way where I got really connected with the characters. Every time I'd pick it up, I'd be like, okay, what are like the March sisters up to now? So it was nice in that way. I felt really connected with the characters, but I feel like there were a lot of times where I would go a long while in between reading new parts of the book that I couldn't get fully invested in certain things happening. And I'm someone that likes to get like emotionally invested and feel all the things when reading a book. So I think because I spent, you know, so long reading it and there would be times where I'd pick it up, read like a chapter and then not pick it up again for another like couple weeks. I think that that kind of influenced my enjoyment a little bit, which obviously is my own fault. So maybe if I reread this and didn't take so long to reread it in the future, I would enjoy it a little bit more and give it that full five stars. But yeah, something about it, I couldn't just give it that full five stars, but I it was really close. I gave it four and a half. I did really enjoy it. And no, I have not seen any of the adaptations yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> so the next book that I predicted would be five stars is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. So this is a book that I am reading or have read for a secret TBR video. And so my rating is not yet out there in the world, but um, I don't think anyone cares that much. And I've already spoiled all of my thoughts on the other books in that vlog. So I might as well spoil my thoughts on this one too. Why not? So I ended up, I think, settling on a four star. I think when I first finished it, I was going to give it four and a half. But as time has progressed and as I've distanced myself a little bit from it, I think a four star feels right. I'm going to try and make all the descriptions I give for these books pretty brief because I really just want to talk about my thoughts and if they were five stars. So this book we're following Esta who is a very talented thief. She's actually able to go back in time and steal like magical artifacts. So this book is her going back to 1902 I believe. Yes 1902. So she goes back to 1902 to steal this magical artifact before um, a certain group of people can get it, but then she kind of gets stuck there and she ends up like teaming up with this group of people and I really did enjoy it. I found there were a lot of twists that I didn't expect to happen. Um, there were some things that I kind of was not surprised about, but um, there were a lot of twists that I didn't expect. And I also just really loved the idea of our main character being from modern day New York City, but going back in time, doing all of this like time traveling to steal these magical artifacts. I just think the concept is really cool. But yeah, I just, I don't think I fully got like super impacted and invested in the story and it just didn't give me that five star feeling, but I did really enjoy it. Definitely going to continue on with the series and a, definitely a solid four star. I really did enjoy it, so I'm excited to continue on, and I definitely think I'm going to have to reread this before going into the next books because I've already forgotten some smaller details, so I wouldn't mind rereading it, so that's a good sign. If I want to reread something, that is a good sign, so I definitely did enjoy it. A solid four star. Not the five star I thought, but you know, I'm still happy that I enjoyed it. The next book that I predicted would be five stars was The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, and I ended up talking about this in my favorite books of 2021 video, so definitely a fave, 
definitely was five stars. This is about a girl named Bryn who is a war orphan and has been raised by these people who don't treat her super well. So she decides to train and take the test to get into one of the military academies. And she ends up getting into Synagard, which is like the best military academy. She ends up getting in there. So we're following her training at this academy, but then also as the name of the book would suggest, there is a war. <laughs> And that was the most simplistic description of the Poppy War you could ever hear. <laughs> but I really enjoyed this. Well, enjoyed is a weird word because this book is really intense and sad and stressful. So like I enjoyed it, but I also didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoyed it in the ways you could enjoy a book like this, but it made me feel a lot of things. This is also one of the books that I put on this list being like, there's no way this isn't going to be a five star. So I wasn't very adventurous with this option, but there's also some books in the rest of the list that I thought were going to be easy five stars and they were not. But anyway, this was one that I thought I would more than likely, like I was 99.9% .9 sure I would give this five stars and I was right. It definitely is an intimidating book, I think because of all of the content within this book and all of the like trigger warnings and content warnings that I've heard, as well as just like the fact that it's about a war and there's a lot of politics involved and strategy. And there's also like the fantastical element on top of it. I thought I was going to get overwhelmed and not understand a lot, but I did not find this dense at all. I feel like this is a type of story with all of the things combined. It could have very easily been very dense and hard to follow, but I didn't find that I was that confused reading this book. So go me. <laughs> I will say like there is a lot of history that is explored and explained in this book that I feel like I didn't fully grasp the first little bit of the book, but I feel like as you kind of read, you learn more about it. And I feel like it's pretty easy to understand like the general idea of what is kind of happening, the politics and all of that to understand like what's happening in this book. So I didn't find it that confusing at all. I thought RF Kuang wrote it in such a fantastic way. She made it really easy to understand while also being an incredible writer as well. And I also really love the characters. They're all so interesting and complex and there's characters that I love, there's characters that I hate, but I'm so intrigued by all of them. So um, another series that I have started for this video and I'm excited to continue on with the series. I'm a little nervous to say the least to continue on because of how intense this book was and how like sick to my stomach I felt reading some parts of this book but I'm excited to continue on regardless. I'm excited to see where Ren goes, where all of these characters go and what ends up happening. I'm also scared to continue on because I know something that happens in the final book. I was spoiled because someone tweeted a spoiler of the third book like two days after the third book was released and I saw it. So that's another reason why I'm terrified to continue because it's going to be devastating, but it's fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> the next book on the list was These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, and this was another one that was really close to being five stars. I gave this four and a half stars. This one I put on the list because I was super excited about it. I had heard so many good things, so I thought I would love it as well. And this book is really hyped, so I'm just glad that I liked it as much as I did. So this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in the 1920s in Shanghai, and I've given the description of this book so many times because I've talked about it so many times on my channel before I even read it, but now I've read it. So hopefully the synopsis won't be showing up as much on my channel anyway. But we are following Roma and Juliet who are on opposing gangs and there ends up being this kind of monster that is kind of killing a bunch of people in Shanghai. People of both gangs are actually being killed as well. So Roma and Juliet decide to team up to try to figure out what is happening and to try to take down this monster that's going around and killing all of these people. And I really did enjoy it. I think the reason I couldn't give it a full five stars was because Roma and Juliet are the main characters and they clearly have this like romantic history with one another and we're seeing the aftermath of that in this book. We're seeing how that didn't work out because of the fact that they are a part of these rival gangs and we're seeing in this book them not getting along, them arguing, them fighting with one another. They're kind of gone back to that mindset of being rivals and I feel like I couldn't get as invested in their relationship because I didn't see what had happened before the events of this book and we didn't get that many flashbacks to when they were younger and when they were like romantically involved. I just feel like we should have seen a little bit more of their relationship from that time period to fully understand why they hated each other so much and then also like why their feelings got so complicated as they continued to work together in this book. I just feel like we didn't see enough of their relationship earlier on for me to get fully invested. That's why I didn't give it a full five stars, but I did really like their characters just on their own. I loved a lot of the side characters, Benedict and Marshall. 
love them. So excited to read more about them in the sequel. But yeah, I really did enjoy this. I found the fact that they were part of these rivaling gangs very interesting. I found the politics of all of that really super interesting to see. And as well as like there being kind of a fantastical element as well with this monster that's going around and killing people. I really enjoyed it. I am so glad that I did because I was so excited for this book. It wasn't the full five stars that I thought it was going to be, but still really enjoyed it and happy I finally read it. And then the final backlisted title that I thought was going to be five stars was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab. And this was not five stars, folks. <laughs> I did talk about this in my most disappointing books of 2021 video. So if that's any indication as to how I felt about this book, you can go and watch that and get all of my thoughts there. But yeah, this was not, this was not a five star. This was a three star. <laughs> and a three star is not a bad rating, but when you feel it so deeply that a book is going to be five stars and that you are going to feel all of the things reading a book, and then it's a three star, that is very disappointing. So this is a book following Addie LaRue who makes the deal with the devil and it is kind of helping her get out of her current situation. But the problem is that he also curses her so that no one can remember who she is. So then we flash forward like 300 years later in present day New York City and she meets this guy named Henry who actually remembers her. So it's a very interesting concept. I just did not, I did not get into it like I thought I was going to. It's a very character driven slow story which I do not mind at all. I love character driven stories actually. They're my preference. I just did not care about the characters. So it makes a character driven story very difficult to love when you don't care for the characters. I just feel like Addie herself was a very bland character. I understand what Victoria Schwab was trying to do with this book. I just don't think it worked for me. I just feel like Addie was not that interesting. She was alive for 300 years and this is what she decided to do and what she decided to make her experience and see. I just feel like there could have been so much more to Addie LaRue as a character. And also Luke, who is the devil character that curses her, he was very like stereotypical like evil and I just did not... I liked certain scenes with the two of them, but those were so short-lived that I was like, well, I wish we had gotten a little bit more of that. And also like the final two paragraphs of this entire novel, I felt the most invested in Addie's story and it was literally the end of the book. So that was a little disappointing. I wish we had seen kind of more of that and that story kind of continue, but I don't know. It just, it didn't really work for me. It didn't make me feel the things I thought I was going to feel reading this book. Don't get me wrong. There definitely were some beautiful moments in this story, beautiful lines, beautiful writing. I did tab it quite a few times as well, but yeah, I just didn't feel the emotional impact of the story like I think I was supposed to. I could tell like as I was reading it I was like I should be crying right now. This is something that should be hurting my feelings and it just wasn't because I was not as invested as I think I should have been for such a character driven story. And also I cannot say it. The amount of times that we heard about Addie LaRue's freckles that they looked like a constellation on her face drove me up a wall. <laughs> it was like every other page we heard that she had those freckles. And I feel like I have a right to complain about it at least the same amount of times that it was written in this book. Okay, that is all. I'm gonna stop talking about this now. This was very disappointing, I think. Maybe a reread I would feel differently, but it just didn't have the emotional impact on me as I thought it would. I didn't care about the characters. I just was not at all invested in Addie's story. It made me feel next to nothing. I really just did not feel really anything for this book. So yeah, this was very disappointing. Thought it was gonna be a five star. My new personality was ready to risk it all for this book. And unfortunately it was only three stars. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna get into the five titles that I predicted would be five stars that were new releases in 2021. And the first two I have to mention were one, I thought pretty, pretty safe. Uh, assumptions and predictions for me, but they were both five stars. So, I mean, I love when I'm right. <laughs> so the first one is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This is a prequel to The Hate You Give following Maverick, who is Star's dad. And we're seeing his kind of story as a young boy growing up, finding out that he is a father and kind of going forward, trying to decide what he wants to do to provide for himself and his family. And I just really enjoyed it. I love Angie Thomas's writing. I feel like I could just say I love Angie Thomas and that would cover it all. She is amazing. She creates such amazing characters and stories. And I think that they're so important as well while also being really good. And I think they're so important for what she's writing about. There's going to be so many people who read her books 
like Concrete Rose and learn either something about a lifestyle that they do not live or people are going to see themselves represented. And I think that that's so important. So yeah, talked about this in my favorite books of 2021 as well. So I'll have that linked below if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this. But this was also five stars. And the other book that I was correct about was Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Last Hours trilogy. And I took no chances putting this on this list. I am simply trash for anything Shadowhunters. So this was kind of a gimme, but you know what? The fact that there haven't been that many that I was right about, even though I was close with a lot, there haven't been many that I've been correct. So I'm taking a win. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, love the Shadowhunters world, love the characters. I love the mess. I love the drama. I love the angst. It's all so good. I tabbed the crap out of this book. I love the Shadowhunter world, as I've said many times. So yeah, this was so much fun. I love the characters in this specific trilogy so much. The plot for this trilogy, what plot, you know? I feel like I read these for the characters. I'm so invested in them and their relationships and just who they are as people and wanting them all to be happy because all of these characters are suffering. <laughs> so I loved reading about the characters, seeing more from them, and also being stressed on their behalf. And I really hope Chain of Thorns doesn't hurt my feelings, but I have a feeling it will. <laughs> the next book that I thought would be a very easy five stars, and unfortunately was not, was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this was another one that I gave a rating initially and then actually lowered it after some time to think about it. So I did give this a four and a half stars at first and then lowered it to a four. I definitely don't love this as much as Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and I find it like kind of unfair to compare it to those other two books but I can't help it. <laughs> so in this book we're following the Riva siblings who are famous in their own right but have kind of also been known for their father who is famous, McRiva, who you may know if you've read Evelyn Hugo, <laughs> but he is very much not in the picture, not in their lives. But we're kind of seeing two kind of timelines within this story. We're getting flashbacks to when the Riva children were growing up with their parents and with their mother. We also see their mom and McRiva kind of meeting and all of that. And then we flash forward to the present day. This book in the present day timeline takes place over the span of 24 hours. We're seeing the Riva siblings kind of get prepared for this summer party party that they always have each year. And then we see kind of the party towards the end of the book and we see all the drama that comes along with it. And I did enjoy this. I just don't think it was her strongest book. And again, like I said, I know it's not fair to compare to her other books, but like knowing that this is the same person that wrote those two books, I couldn't help it. And I feel like I was just not, again, as emotionally impacted by this story as I was with Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones. I think Taylor Jenkins Reid is an incredible writer. The way she writes these books that are following different people and how she connects everything and the kind of historical aspect to it as well. I really do enjoy the way she writes these novels. I just don't think that these characters and this particular story was her strongest. There also were a lot of perspectives that we got once we got to the party later on that I thought was cool because it added a little bit to the wider scope of the party. We're getting the perspectives of certain people who are just attending the party, but they don't really add anything to the main plot. You're just kind of getting their perspective so that when, you know, later on you're in one of the Riva siblings perspectives and they say, oh, there's that guy doing this thing. You're like, oh, that's the guy that we saw, but it doesn't really add anything. It's just adding a little bit more to the kind of wider scope, like I said, of the party, but you don't really need those perspectives. It's like, why do I care about what this guy is doing when it has nothing to do with the overall plot? I think at this point I'm going to be reading anything that Taylor Jenkins Reid writes. I just think that she's incredible. So like this is still a good book by itself. I just know she can do better. So this one just didn't hit the same like her other books did. I don't know. I know it's not really fair to compare this novel to her other novels, but I just can't help it. This one just didn't have that emotional impact on me like I expect from her, but I still think it's very good. I still think it's written very well. There were a couple of things with the writing that I was like, this feels a little cheesy, but I definitely still really enjoyed it. And I would still highly recommend. There's been a lot of people who have still really enjoyed this. I even enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It just wasn't the five star I was expecting it to be. So my next five star prediction was A Psalm of Storms and Silence by Rose Anne A. Brown. This was the sequel to A Song of Rates and Ruin, which I read in 2020. I almost said last year thinking it was still 2021. I'm all confused. Time is fake. I read A, S a Song of Rates and Ruin in 2020 and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four and a half stars. 
My main issue with that one was just the pacing seemed a bit off and I thought the pacing in this one would have been a lot better simply because it was the sequel, there was going to be a lot going on. Where A Song of Raids and Ruin ended, I thought this book was just going to be pure chaos and unfortunately I still had some problems with the pacing and some other problems as well. Unfortunately this was three and a half stars which is not a bad rating again but when you expect it to be five stars it is very disappointing especially because I really loved the first one. I don't really like to say much about what this duology is about especially when giving a description for the first one because I think the dust jacket spoils too much in the first one so I will just say the first one you're following Karina and Malik and somehow for some reasons they are trying to kill one another but they also kind of develop feelings for one another and there's so much more to it there's like a competition element it's just so fun and so great I loved the characters I loved the relationship I loved all the angst and the way that one ended was so action-packed and so stressful and this one unfortunately lost a lot of that love that I had for that first one. I felt like the characters in this one just felt a bit off to me. I can't really place why. I felt like the last like 200 or like 150 pages of this book felt more similar to the first book in this duology and the characters felt more normal and that's where I really bumped up my writing because I did love the ending of this book so much. But yeah the characters felt off. I feel like there was a big chunk of this book like honestly probably about probably about this much of the book which is almost like half the book. I was bored. I felt like it was dragging. I felt like the characters were acting not correct. I still can't exactly place it, but I don't know. I just felt like it was dragging a bit. It just felt like there wasn't enough content to fill a whole second book. So she kind of had to put in some filler stuff happening and I just feel like it dragged on for a bit too long, especially in Malik's perspective. I feel like his perspective every time we were in it, it was just him going back and forth on what he wanted to do and what he believed and who he should be, like what side he should be on. And as much as those dilemmas were relevant and he should have been having them and all of that, it just felt like every time we were in his perspective, it was just him battling those things. And yes, there were things happening, but it just felt like it was really dragging at certain points and that it just didn't need to be as long as it was. And again, like I said, I just feel like this one kind of lost a lot of the charm and the love that I had for the first one. I felt so just like neutral on all of the characters. I just didn't care that much. I, I went from being fully invested in these characters and what was going to happen at the end of A Song of Rates of Ruin to getting into this and being excited and then just being like, oh, okay, I suddenly don't really care. I was just kind of reading to see what would happen simply because I did love the characters from the first one so much. But if I didn't have that love for the first book and wanting to know if that was going to all work out, I don't know how I would have read this book because a lot of it I just didn't really enjoy. I shouldn't say I didn't enjoy a lot of it. There was just a, a big portion where I was bored and it was dragging. And I do think that the end of the book really stepped it up for me and that's why I gave it a three and a half star. That rating might change depending on what I think, you know, in the next coming weeks. I tend to change my ratings sometimes once I have more time to think about certain things. So a three and a half does seem a, maybe a bit high, but I do think the last chunk of this book, like the last like 150 to 200 pages, like I said, were so good and so similar to the first book. I could definitely tell that where maybe the middle sections were kind of just added for the sake of the sequel, that the ending was a little bit more thought out and was more so involved in maybe her plan from the start. I just really enjoyed the ending. I feel like everything came together in such a great way, an emotional way, and I definitely got a bit teary-eyed at the end of this book. But yeah, this one just didn't make me feel the same way I did about the first one. I still do think it's a good duology as a whole. I just definitely prefer the first one. I think the first one was a lot stronger than this one, and I do really like the way this ended. But yeah, there was just a big chunk of this where I was very bored and just not interested in actually like getting frustrated with the characters. It was just a very weird experience. So yeah, didn't love this. Maybe we'll change my rating to maybe just like a three star. I'm not really sure. So I'm still kind of trying to process my thoughts, but a three and a half for now. If anything, it's going to go lower. It's not going to go closer to a five star. So I was very wrong about this and I'm I've never been more sad about being wrong. <laughs> and then my final five star prediction for 2021 was Gilded by Marissa Meyer. I decided to add Marissa Meyer's new book to my five star predictions for 2021 even though the book that she came out with in 2020 that was also my five star predictions for that year was not a five star. But this one I was a little bit more confident in and it definitely was a higher rating. I gave this one a 4.5 
seven five stars. I don't bring out the like quarter ratings very often. I only recently started using them because I've made a Storygraph account and you can do quarter star ratings. And I try not to do them that often, but this book felt right for a 4.75. So this book is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. We're following Cyrilda, who has always known to kind of on the nights the wild hunt is hunting and out there everyone has to kind of stay in their houses you don't want to get swept up in the wild hunt so one night she does get caught up into it gets caught up in the earl king and to kind of get away from him and to kind of prove that she is a valuable human that can't be killed by him and his wild hunt she says that she can spin straw into gold so the next time the wild hunt is out they come back and they take her to the castle and he forces her to make straw into gold and she ends up getting the help from guild because she can't obviously do that she was lying and this book is just kind of following her trying to stay alive make sure she can continue to spin straw into gold and also trying to discover the secrets of the castle of the earl king the wild hunt and all of that and i really enjoyed it this definitely took a bit of a turn for like the darker side towards the end that i didn't expect and i also just love retellings and i think the fact that it's a rumpelstiltskin retelling is very random but very unique it's you know it's not another beauty and the beast retelling no shade to beauty and the beast retellings there's just a lot of them or like a lot of cinderella retellings which she's also done but besides the point i think it's very interesting that she took something that was was a lot more unique something that isn't retold very often and i really really enjoyed it and even though i did really enjoy this i found it very interesting trying to discover all the secrets along with cyrilda and having this rumpelstiltskin retelling aspect was really interesting it didn't give me that full five star feeling i like i can't explain it i know it's probably frustrating that i keep just saying like some of these books just didn't give me that feeling but i imagine you all know what i'm talking about you just know you get that feeling when it's a five star sometimes so I didn't get that with this book even though I did really enjoy it and I feel like this is another situation that's very similar to Taylor Jenkins Reid. I find that even though I'm trying not to because it's very different I am comparing it to Marissa Meyer's other books that are retellings. She has written The Lunar Chronicles as well as Heartless which are all retellings and all of them are five stars for me. I love them all so much so to read a retelling from her knowing those other retellings have such an impact on me it's hard I think to not compare it but I did really enjoy it I do think it's a very solid start to a duology there is going to be a sequel and I'm hoping this is not a situation like this where the sequel ended up taking a turn for the worse I'm relatively confident that the sequel to Gilded is going to be even better I think we're going to be discovering a lot of the secrets to the Earl King and to this castle and about guild who is like the rumpelstiltskin character i'm very intrigued by what is to come i'm hoping that will be a five star but this one unfortunately was not a five star it was very very close and i think it's just it's hard to get that like five star feeling out of my brain once i read a book that doesn't have that i feel like i can't fully give it a five star but i did really enjoy this and i'm excited to see where the series goes but those were my five star predictions for 2021 and even though i only technically had three five stars I got three out of ten correct I had a lot that were very very close I had a lot of four and a half stars I had that one 4.75 stars so I was really close I definitely feel like I went a bit safe with a lot of these options so hoping it to kind of branch out and kind of change that up in my 2022 predictions which will be coming soon but yeah even though I was very close with a lot of them I still only got three right so let us hope that next year will be a bit better and that I will actually have more five stars out of the ones that I predict we will see <laughs> definitely let me know down below in the comments one if you've read any of these books and if they were five stars or not or if you had any five star predictions for 2021 and if you were right or not i would love to know but i think that that is going to be it for this video so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in my next one bye